I think that so many people, they will consider the most accessible nearest chemical when they think about a chemical they haven't tried. So a lot of people, when they think of psychedelics, myself included, assume that it was a combination of alcohol and aspirin and pot, all the things I'd tried where it's just, it numbs you. It makes you lose control. It makes you forget stuff. And it's none of those things. Like it changes the way you think it's psychoactive, just like all those other substances, but it mostly enhances your perception, physical perception. And in terms of rationality, it's not that you're irrational. You are just differently rational in some ways. You're just thinking in uh, patterns that you haven't thought in before. So I was deeply moved and impressed by the way that I was still myself and I was not a lesser version of myself. I was in some ways, especially with acid, I found a much truer version of myself. And so what did you try other things along the way on some sort of regular interval that over time you realized you were not as depressed? How did you actually solve that over time or sort of experiment with things that seemed yeah. to help? A watershed moment occurred, I think it was December of 2017. I went to a sort of controversial ay ayahuasca ceremony in Brooklyn because my depression had become unavoidable and was hurting relationships. Um, when I went there, I discovered that the shaman was a bit unorthodox in that he would hand out medicines at his discretion, that he created himself. He was a graduate of Cal Poly, in addition to having shamanistic lineage. It's a pretty interesting guy. Anyway, but is unorthodox and somewhat controversial for handing out personalized medicines after having a very brief talk with you. I came to this community extremely nervous. I felt like I was a novice in an AP class because the shaman proceeded to give a lecture for about an hour and a half before we even ingested anything that made so little sense that I would scrutinize the beginning of the sentence. And by the end of the sentence, I would have completely lost the thread of what was going on. It would be things like the fractals diminish as the magnification of entities quiver in existence. It's just what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so fast forward to after we've actually taken the medicine, I'm finding that people are starting to have good experience and I'm starting to feel really good, but I am not throwing up. I'm not purging like I'd read about it happens with ayahuasca and I'm not writhing in pain. So I go up to the shaman and I ask for more and I'm given it. And once again, I find that I feel good and I am not writhing around in pain. So I go up once more and I ask his apprentice, who is my friend, I think it's not working. And she just said, why? And there was something in that moment where I understood I had spent all this money and researched all this and come to this place so I could feel bad. I wanted to vomit. And I wanted to see jaguars and I wanted to writhe around in pain because ultimately I feel like I deserve it. And that is the root of my depression and that I was being cursed with feeling good. That was my burden to bear in this moment was, could you actually be kind to yourself for a second? Instead of working hard to earn something, what if you just felt good about existing. And I still find that excruciatingly painful, but it was such a revolutionary moment in my life that I, it was like, I looked in and saw the core seed of my depression. And it, like anything, psychedelics are not a silver bullet because you have to work at it. But now I know how and I know how to distance myself from my thoughts instead of becoming my thoughts.